warm welcome to Handcrafts with Nadine. My name is Nadine and I'm coming to you here from a very warm Byron Shire in Australia in the northern New South Wales. It's 29 degrees today and it's meant to be autumn so it's very warm and uh, I'm originally from Montreal, Canada where uh, currently they've had a huge snowstorm so very contrasting. I live here in um, Ocean Shores in the Byron Shire uh, with my husband, our two teenage daughters, and our little two-year-old Labrador bear. Today I'm going to be talking to you about um, my Three Seasons cardigan that I finished, a pair of socks I'm working on for my husband, as well as a copycat crochet project that I made for my girls um, about two and a half years ago. So uh, we've just had, uh, we've just been away camping last week. Uh, we went to a gorgeous little spot. Um, it's actually called, uh, it's a hip camp, hip camping. So it's on uh, somebody's property. So someone who has a big farm, they just, um, yeah, uh, designate spots on their farm for people to set up their tents or their caravans or whatever they have. And uh, that's where we were in a place called Sleepy Hollow. It was very beautiful. Uh, however, it was very, very rainy. So uh, that always uh, makes camping not so much fun when you have a tent. But we made the best of it and uh, we're back now. The girls are starting their school holidays uh, this uh, today as first day of school holidays, I guess, technically. And uh, they'll be off for two weeks. So here in Australia, very unlike Canada, um, there's basically holidays between every term. So they start they start the year in February and then they have term one, two weeks holidays, uh, term two, another two weeks holidays, term three, two weeks holidays, and then term four finishes in December and then they have that, that summer holidays here. So yeah, took some adjusting too, but here we are. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is my Three Seasons Cardigan by Wool and Pine. Um, I finished it. I did not think I was going to get to block it uh, because, like I said, it's been very, very rainy. Today is actually the first sunny day we've had in a while. And, um, but it was, it started to stop raining yesterday and I thought, okay, I'll block it. I really love blocking my uh, sweaters outside. So um, the sun was peeking through the clouds a little bit. So I set out um, a towel and I popped it outside. And then by today, because it's nice and sunny, it had dried. So here it is. Here's the back. I'll try to insert a photo of me wearing it after because it's just, it's way too hot right now to try it on. So, um, but yeah, the only modification I made was, as I talked about last time, I added a panel under the arms. There was a lot of um, people saying that the sleeves were very tight and originally uh, it had a decrease that went just really quickly right here and the rest of the sleeve looked very small. So I added that little panel, which I uh, took the pattern from the back here. And yeah, just I just only decreased maybe three times or something. And yeah, it fits much better. It has opened up a lot as um, I expect, you know, that cables and lace do. So it's very cute, it's very cropped, but that's great for me because I love to wear it over my dresses and my high-waisted skirts and pants. I know low-rise pants are coming back in style for my girls, but I think that ship has sailed for myself. Anywho, so that's it. It's very lovely. That was knit in Bendigo Woolen Mills Rustic in the Color Forest. Um, today it feels not itchy, but maybe not as soft as it would do in the winter because because it's so hot and sticky, but it's still very lovely and, and soft for a rustic yarn. Oh, and the buttons I bought uh, on uh, an, in an Etsy shop here in Australia. I'm not sure. I'll try to put the name of her shop down below. I can't remember. Um, I ordered dark buttons. Um, last time I ordered buttons from her, I ordered the dark ones and smaller and they're a little bit darker and I think I like them a little bit better than these ones. I think I would have preferred them to be a little bit darker, but they'll do. Yeah, they still look quite nice. Ooh, I'm starting to sweat in here. Okay, so um, like I said, we went camping. Um, I did not get to do 
really any knitting while I was camping. Um, I did get to read. Oh, I, I was going to get started on a cabled sweater for my daughter, but we just, uh, she couldn't really decide on which kind of pattern that she wanted. So um, anyways, there I was stuck with yarn that she didn't want me to knit. That was all I brought was that yarn and she didn't really want anything that I was showing her. So I just read my book. Um, I have been working on recently though, a pair of socks for my husband. Um, the brand is called Fiddlesticks. That's an, I believe an Australian brand. And it's 75% superwash wool and 25% nylon. So it's not merino. Um, it is superwash, but that's all right for socks. Um, here's one that I finished. So the pattern I used, I'm going to link it below. I forgot to write it down. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's for um, high arches. My father-in-law, my husband, and my youngest daughter all have extremely high arches, uh, which is very fortunate for my youngest daughter because she's really into dancing and everyone just oohs and aahs over her beautiful pointed feet. <laughs> this really just the shape of her foot. Um, anywho, so that was one. So it's a self-striping yarn. Um, now that I look at it, the colors look very Christmassy. Kind of, yeah, but I don't think it was meant to be a Christmassy color. Uh, so this pattern that she's made for high arches, I will just show you. Hold on. This is a sock that I had knit for my husband out of uh, Mondim, which is a uh, 100% wool sock. And so just to show you what's happened to his sock, his foot is really, really long from here to here. So look how, look how it, that sock is stretched. So because his high arch, it's hard for him to get um, socks on and then over his foot. So this pattern has a lot of space from here to here and it's knit in rib. So it's very stretchy to get on and it's rib over the foot. And then the heel flap and gusset. I, uh, normally I, I do toe up socks and I do an afterthought heel or a fish fish lips kiss heel or something like that. I'm not really a big fan of this look, but um, I wanted to try it for his foot because yeah, he does have trouble fitting some socks that I make him. So it has a really long, is this called the heel flap? Really, it must be because it goes around the heel and it's like a little flap that you knit. Um, so really, really long. So then by the time you, after you do your heel turn, by the time you get here, you're decreasing for a very long time for pretty much half the foot you're decreasing and that's just to give that extra length for that high arch so he's tried that one on and it just fits brilliantly I'm very pleased with that um so here's where i'm at on the second one what's really great about self-striping socks is um i made this one before christmas and then i'd put it down so when i'm knitting the second one um, I didn't have to count rows. I just said, okay, when I'm, at, when I'm at the end of the pink, that's when I need to start doing the heel. And so, and yeah, for the decreases, same thing. Well, you know, you decrease to the number you had, but yeah, I thought it was very handy. It's very handy to have the stripe there to kind of guide you. I managed to kind of start on the, well, that would be a key part, wouldn't it? To start at the same color. So yeah, just when I finished off at the toe here, that's where I was at. Back to the beginning of the striping so that was perfect really so that's what i'm working on for him oh i forgot to say what i'm wearing today um today i'm wearing a top that i uh, just improvised it's raglan um i started i started here uh so here to here and then a knit raglan so you know you're increasing at the two spots on the shoulders and then increased again on the end and then I just did um, garter stitch for a few stitches every time I increase to keep that from rolling too much. And then, um, yeah, this yarn is beautiful. It's 100% silk and it's from Faith's Book Marketplace in Australia. There's a man, I think his name is Gary. Um, he sells or he used to sell a lot of yarn on Facebook Marketplace. It looks to me like he's kind of swapped to selling um, fiber for spinning recently, but 
yeah, I should check because maybe he still has, but this is, it was 100% silk. He used to have all these different kinds of silk. And this one is a shiny one. I, it must be mulberry, I think. Uh, it's very, very soft and very, very comfortable to wear on hot days here in Australia. Um, it was undyed and I dyed it with um, food coloring. Uh, maybe two years ago, I was really into dyeing yarn with food coloring. Um, so in, in a big pot on my stove. And so this was just, um, I guess, a pink mix with red that I'd used. Uh, oh yeah, back to the construction. So just raglan and then um, I put I put the sleeves on hold and then I, I knitted down the bottom. Then when I picked back up the sleeves, uh, I did a ruffle, which you just increase really quickly. And then I just, oh yeah, and then I did a few rows of garter and then cast off. And I thought, yeah, it was really cute. I think you can kind of see that was a different um, skein that I dyed when you dye stuff by hand. The colors aren't always exactly the same. And um, I did also originally have a ruffle on the bottom, but I decided that it, it looked a bit, it wasn't very flattering for my um, my body, body shape. So I went back and uh, knit it in twisted rib. Oh, and this is the um, pocket skirt from Peppermint Magazine. I think I talked about that in another episode. I've got one in a different color. Uh, it's one of my favorite skirts. It's really nice. Okay, so uh, that's all I wanted to say about what I'm wearing. Okay, and oh yes, so a couple of maybe, was it right before COVID? Mm, two years ago, two and a half years ago, my daughters were, um, you know, they follow this girl named, uh, hold on, I wrote it down, uh, Carson Campbell. Uh, I guess on Instagram, and she was wearing in a photo a crocheted top, and I'll try to insert the photo. It, I, this morning it took me a while, but I, I found the photo again. Uh, a crochet top and just different colored uh, cotton yarns, and um, she had said it was from Amazon, and then my youngest asked me if I would be able to make that for her. So I had a look, and um, I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. So we put in an order from Hobby, Hobby, not sure how you pronounce it, that uh, that yarn shop that advertises all over Google. And um, they have a lot of cotton yarns. So I had ordered um, a variety of colors in, um, she wanted similar colors to the one that the girl was wearing in the photo. So yeah, we went ahead and got the colors. And um, I was just having a look at the top and it just had, um, the sleeves looked very easy. It was just like a mesh where you knit, uh, or, sorry, not knit, crochet, um, crochet chains, double crochet, half double crochet. I'm not sure what I use. Oh, anyways, let me show you it. So here's the top, the sleeves, they're like bell sleeves. And yeah, it's just got some kind of asymmetrical uh, color blocking. So yeah, I, I looked online um, for cr different crochet stitches. And um, so I picked up one for the teal. And oh, let me show you the back. Um, so I would have started, I think it started here, and just crocheted, just measured on her, crocheted, and then um, tried the pattern. Uh, did a couple rows and then measured on her body and I thought okay yeah that looks good so kept going around and then when we got to the yellow I I looked up a different one that one looks like flowers hope you can see that um and then another oh the same the same stitch in the orange um so I knit that just like basically a rectangle and then it was a bit tricky but the great thing about crochet is um I find here it's a lot more free than knitting is in terms of just making like then you can just pick up wherever. So um, what did I do next? I think I did the sleeves. So I would have started here, oh, no up here. Wait, is that what I did? I think I knit the sleeve, I crocheted the sleeves. I think, forget about the teal in the orange. So um, I started here.
I went back and forth and then um, crocheted the whole sleeve changing colors. And so once that was done, I sewed it together on the bottom and then I picked up here, I think, and then I crocheted, that's right, and then I crocheted back and forth here to just to give it a bit more um, so it could hold up the sleeve a little bit better. So I did that on either side and then I went and um, did a little border, a crochet border. I think it's called like a scallop border. I'm not too sure. I did that there and then I picked up here and did the scallop border all the way around here and then back down there and back down. And then I just put these little flower buttons which I thought were a bit cute on there. And yeah. And then I knit another one for her sister uh, with basically the same colors, a little bit different color placement. And she wanted, oh yeah, sorry, I also tied that at the top to keep it on a bit better. Just made some crochet chain ties. Um, her sister's, I feel like she can't find it, so otherwise I'd show it to you. But I think for her, we might have done ties here instead. She didn't have the buttons. She didn't want the buttons. So yeah, I really, I really enjoy um, trying to hack patterns or copycat patterns um, to look at things and try to figure it out. Uh, it's really fun. It's really, I think, really good for your brain to try to look at things and try to work out how to do it. So yeah, uh, that's it for me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Um, if you are, uh, I would really appreciate if you would give me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you uh, think you'd like to see more of my videos, I'm trying to put up a video uh, once a week. And um, yeah, that's all for me today. I hope you have a lovely day and you get to make something beautiful with your hands. Thank you.